Good morning, everyone. As you know, today is the fourth day, and uh, it's time for me to introduce our uh, speaker, Professor Isan Patro, uh, Vice Chancellor of Prevenza University. Uh, is a microbiologist uh, biologist of eminence. From Kurukhetra University, he earned MSc, MPhil, PhD degree and then began his career in the faculty of geology, Jivaji University, Gwalior, in 1989. Professor Patra was a postdoctoral fellow uh, at the MRC Neurochemical Pathology Unit, Newcastle, UK, and Department of uh, Anatomy, University of Cologne, Germany. Professor Patra has made significant contribution in glial neurobiology. He has successfully completed 15 major research projects and guided 27 PhD students and published 88 research papers in reputed journals. Professor Patra organized 23 conferences, symposia, workshop in biosciences and neurosciences based upon his preeminence in glial microbiology he was made the project coordinator at the dbd national initiative on glial cell research in health and disease which includes premier institute of india namely center for cellular and Molecular Biology, Central Drug Research Institute, JNU, Jadapur University, National Brain Research Center, and National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences. Professor Patra was elected a fellow of the National Academy of Science, Indian Ac Academy of uh, Neurosciences, and Coliseum internationally Neuropsychopharmacologium. He won the distinction of uh, being made, his own the distinction of being made honorary national fellow of the Geological Society, Geological Society Calcutta. He has served, he has several awards and honors to his credit, including the coveted BK Bhatnakar Bachavat lifetime. Achievement Award of Indian Academy of uh, Neurosciences in 2018. Professor Patra's outstanding contribution to human resource development in neurosciences by way of establishing India uh, first uh, UTD of neurosciences at Jivaji University, Gwalior, deserves a special mention. With this brief introduction, I would like to invite uh, Professor Patra to deliver his lecture and uh, it's a very the topic is interesting writing to win a research grant who doesn't want to win a research grant we write research grant submit it to the funding agency and then our heartbeat starts you know we anxiously wait for the result so how to get a breakthrough that is the topic of presentation of Professor Patra Professor Patra it's your time Google Meet platform, you can have the Google Meet platform. Thank you very much. Professor Patra. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before I do anything, let me congratulate uh, the vice chancellors and faculty of uh, both the universities, the Central University of Orissa, Koraput, and Utkal University, Bhubaneswar, for bringing uh, Odisha into the first 100 universities, government universities uh, in the country. Uh, and uh, I, I must tell you that uh, the research and uh, research proposals, research grants and publications have contributed a lot towards that. So that makes this more important today because the other universities and the faculties and other universities should become activated now to meet the goal of entering into at least 150 uh, list of the Indian government universities. I wish everyone good luck and I uh, start uh, my uh, presentation on uh, writing a to win a research uh, grant i i would uh, like to mention uh, 
two names uh, to begin with, Professor P. N. Tandon, who has made me what I am today, and Professor Gomti Gopinath, who was the mentor and uh, I mean the person who who taught me how to write a good uh, research grant because he was my mentor for the first project that I submitted to uh, DB, DST uh, long back in uh, 1992. And uh, to Professor Michael Z uh, Missel Zygmunt and uh, Dr. Beth Fisher, uh, whose lots of whose in input will you will see in, in the presentation during I presented because they visited our university and we I had uh, literally been taught by them how to really speak about this subject. And the other people, my own teacher, Professor S.P. Sama, Professor Manju Sama, who has been the secretary of DBT, uh, Professor Sasi Badwa, Professor P.K. Said, these people have been mentoring me all through for writing projects and getting grants. I particularly would like to mention two names from DBT who were very helpful in our understanding and uh, sitting in the committees to know how projects can be accepted or rejected, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Bindu De and Dr. Suman Govil. And then, of course, I'd like to mention two more names, Professor UC Srivastava and Professor Jim Edwardson at Newcastle, who all through have been uh, there with me in, in my uh, activities. And of course, to my critics, you must have some positive critics with you. Without a positive critic in your life, you possibly are not going to do anything substantial in your life. So uh, to begin with, let us come to understand we write a grant application to do research. And what is research? The word research has come from uh, two syllables, re and search. Re is again or over again or a new thing that you want to do on something which has already been known. Uh, you do a research or search on something, examine very closely, carefully, or test and try. That is search. And research makes it making, uh, trying to understand known things more capable better and more better and more better every time we do this. A careful, systematic, patient study and investigation in some of the field of knowledge and which is undertaken to establish principles and policies. That is what for research. And uh, actually to uh, to achieve this, uh, we can we can always uh, define research in more ways, search of knowledge, systematic and scientific search for getting relevant answers to any specific topic, scientific inquiry into a subject, a movement from the known to unknown, the voice to discovery. Bloomer uh, defined research as research is primarily committed to establish systemic, uh, reliable, and valid uh, knowledge about the social world. And uh, what is science then? Science is uh, uh, the investigation of rational concept capable of being tested by observation and experimentation and science limits itself to the study of the physical universe. Now for people who are not from science subject, let me tell you, your investigation is also like what we do in science. You also tend to investigate rationally and try to understand the concepts and bring up on investigations which we call experiments you call investigations to reach to uh, a new knowledge a new level of understanding and knowledge and uh, so we come to writing a winning uh, grant application and uh, what we will do is we'll go a step by step guide to planning and writing a research project that what that's what it will be and I, in between i'll be giving some of my own uh, experiences with with things and what's a research proposal a research proposal is a undertaking that is a short term we all know a project is for five years three years two years one year like that and then it's a it has got a definite objective we cannot go on asking questions and go on asking questions we'll do that throughout our life but in one project there will be a specific thing that we are going to talk and then there will be well-defined inputs to reach to an output. That must also be defined in your uh, proposal. And then the meaning of objective targets and the specified cost and quality, which you have to mention in a project by using technical skills and management skills that a scientist or an investigator has. And believe me, 
is not only the technical skills that you have makes you an investigator, a researcher, or a scientist, or a professor. You ought to have in your life a lot of management skills which you must learn. And I suggest that every person who wants to get into research as a career should always be having something to do in their uh, understanding of management of things. I would appreciate if some of you can go and read some management books on operational skills. And that certainly helps you in reaching to what you would like to reach. Then we start planning and writing a grant. See, we must plan ourselves very carefully before we start doing or writing a grant. What we need to do, what you, you ought to know what you want to do and why you want to do this. This is very essential. I have always been told, and in, to, to all the young people, Professor Tandon keeps on telling, you must know what do you want and you must know all that you want. And this needs a lot of concentration, a lot of thinking. Every time you should be thinking exactly what are you looking for and what are your targets in, uh, in your uh, life. Then, then consider how you plan, your plan will achieve a positive results. And then locate a granting organization of source. Say, we must know where our grants will be accepted. Say, a person from agriculture will send it to ICAR, a general scientist would send it to, or a technologist will send it to the ESA, Department of Science and Technology. And somebody who is working in biotechnology or areas of biology will go to DBT, or people working on social sciences will go to ICSSR. And that, that's how you must be trying to find out where you are and where you should apply to reach to a particular uh, source. And the other, the other mean way is also what happens is in many, uh, in many times, all these agencies call for applications. They say, we are interested in supporting grants on a specific area. Say, for example, now everybody has started asking research projects on COVID-19 related areas in science and social science, psychology, everywhere. So depending on the need of that day, some people will invite applications on some specific areas where you should be able to uh, apply and get some grant. And then the, the other thing is, uh, it's the research that organization makes sure that its mission aligns with your plan. Suppose you are working in an institute, say for example, drug research institute. They are into identifying molecules which could be used as drugs in different disorders of of the health or, or of the biological system. So if you are working in defense, their research will be towards defense personnel or defense strategies. Or if you are working in a uh, in, a, in a, another institute, let's say for you are in medical uh, institute, they will be towards some certain diseases and they may have mandates to meet. And so your proposal should be matching that mandate also at the same time, the mandate of the source from where you want to get your grant. And they review the organization's proposal guidelines. Wherever you apply, you read their guidelines, what they want in a project and what are the labels of supporting support they have. Some agencies give a lot of grant for basic research, other agencies are interested in translational research. There may be agencies we are, which are interested in uh, developing theoretical uh, concepts. So you have to look into their guidelines. An example, sample proposals from your department, from your peers and other organizations. And sometimes the funding bodies also give some example, uh, successful grant application in their site. So if you read all these, you will be uh, basically ready to start uh, writing your grant application. So when you sit down to write an application, develop a concept and concept that fits. That fits what? That fills a gap in knowledge. F, I is important to the foreign agency. T is the test, test a hypothesis. And S is short term investment in long term goals. So what I say in the last one is your lab as a leader of the lab, you will have a specific ambition. Say, for example, my group works on neuroinflammation. My group works on the glial cells in the brain. So my lab will all the time keep thinking on that. But in relation to other things, like now what we are thinking is 
how a COVID-19 infection would influence the glial cells in the brain? That could be one of the basic uh, questions today I would ask from my group. Or people in glial cell research are, have already started asking on this. So this is how you will have a specific, uh, a broad area. You will identify a subject on which you want to work. And then that should be your long-term goal. And every project should go towards achieving the final goal. So small, small areas in the larger interest of your group should be projected into projects. So this is what I mean. You feel the, the, your project must be filling a gap in the knowledge. It should be important to the funding agency who is going to give you money. It should be testing a hypothesis and it should meet the short term investment of your time and money to achieve the long term goal of your group. The next is you must have a hypothesis. A hypothesis are possible explanations for phenomena that you observe or observed. And the knowledge advances by rejection of hypothesis. So your hypothesis needs to be challenged and you need to challenge another hypothesis also. There is no such thing as a proof in science or humanities or whatever research area you have. And each step forward, in fact, disproves what was known earlier and never become attached to the beauty or simplicity of the first hypothesis that you get to your mind. So you should accept challenges. You should be ready to accept challenges. Invite challenges in your life. That will help you to progress in life. Then the quality of scientific research that you should consider. Every science project or every uh, research project, uh, in speed, uh, of scientific project, I should say, every research project should have some quality into it. What are there? A good scientific research produces results. I, let me let me tell you one thing. All the time that I use scientific doesn't really mean science alone. Scientific is a systematic study or systematic way of doing things, a methodical way of doing things. So even the social scientists do scientific research only. Their research is also scientific. So appropriate experimental design or investigation design is very crucial to a for acquisition of the knowledge that you want to attain. Even a minor investigation or experiment can involve the challenge, the mental exercise, and the fun of big knowledge or big science. So you should be ready to achieve that through small and big questions. Your question could be very small, but the final result could be very big. It could bring about a lot of change in understanding of the subject area in which you are working. And how do we select a topic? That's what everybody comes and asks me. Who will tell you a topic? Do you think I've got a topic in my pocket? Somebody comes and says, sir, what area I would like to work? I will speak about my areas. I can give you hundreds of uh, things that I read in newspaper, listen to the uh, television or go, go across people and talk to them. But are those all those ideas or all, all those topics interesting for you? So you have to choose your own topic. You have to do a little exercise to do that. And how do we know that? How do we do that? You, first of all, must have a thorough knowledge of the subject area. Whatever area you want to study, say, for example, if somebody wants to study about the history of Orissa. So you must have lots of idea about Orissa as such and what is history, what could be the history of Orissa. And then in that, you could ask specific questions about a specific area wherein you would like to say something. Or for example, if you talk about how uh, how the business will be affected in the post-COVID era, era, then you must have what are business, knowledge about what, what business is, how business is affected by environmental factors or social factors or, or pandemics like this. Then you can perhaps go and ask a specific question, what happens after we open up? or the lockdown is off and then everything is off, then we are coming towards our own business, how this period is going to affect that. So we must have knowledge of all the things, then only we can put a question together. The more you know, the more easy to find a gap or a problem about the areas. So keep reading. That's the only thing that I can say. What you read, that also I'll come and tell you. Is there a problem and can the proposer do it? That's the question that you ask yourself. Then the, the easiest area, easiest way of finding a topic is if there is a call for proposal. When the agency asks, invites applications, they give you areas. These are the areas in which we want 
applications for research. So preliminary, primarily you get a broad area and within that broad area, then you can ask specific questions which you can possibly investigate and give some knowledge to the agency or to the society. What are the sources of finding out a topic or a problem? The very first thing these days people would say is internet. Fine. Internet is what? Internet, using internet possibly, you could find out many other things. So I say all the time, internet per se is a, is a, is a mode of reaching to knowledge. So you should not be just uh, getting uh, affectionate to uh, smaller areas of, you know, I mean, some smaller search engines of in internet and get yourself satisfied. But use the internet to reach to the right knowledge that is there available in the, in the knowledge bank. At the cutting edge, what is this cutting is Direct contact with the researchers who are working in the area. And an active research scholar, a lecturer, or a professor. I always say the younger the person is, the more ideas that this man has. My professor would always say in conferences, when we meet, attend a conferences with my professor, he would say, ask his son, he would uh, let you know more about it. One day I asked him, why do you embarrass me by saying this? You are, you know more than me. I said, no, you know more than me because you are concentrating on your thesis, your work. So you are reading more and more on your thesis, your work. I am reading about the entire area where six or seven students are reading, working. I read about everyone, but specifically on your subject, possibly you read more than I read, and maybe you will have the nascent information available there and the current literature. So before I go to current literature, let me let me tell you the the best thing to get to the edge of science or edge of your subject is attending important conferences, not attending conferences just to listen, have good food, good stay and come back. No. The time when you have a cup of tea, the time when you are having a lunch and just before the entertainment program in the evening or immediately after that, between that and the dinner, you should be talking to people who are important, who are, who make a, a mark in your subject, who are the people who lead your uh, subject and then talk to them. They will be the best sort to give you the edge of it. And you listen to the plenary lectures, the keynote addresses, they are in end of it. They say where we are and where are we going. So find out where you would like to go. Then the current literature problems being investigated and problems or further problems that could come there. You have a keyword for your area. Okay. So the best thing is go to the internet. You can go to Google. No problem. You could go to one of those indexing systems like PubMed or whatever you have in your subject and put that keyword there. And the latest paper will appear number one, which is most closer, more closer to your keyword and something that has just appeared today or yesterday or day before. Download that paper and read that paper. What I suggest, you may not, you may not believe in, in this uh, busy uh, schedules of mine, I ensure before I sleep, I read one paper in my subject and I always get it downloaded from PubMed for the day, that week. And the best thing is to download a review and read it when you are traveling or when you have got a little free time and the review are the, reviews are the best sources for getting newer information because all the reviews end up by saying that there is something that you want to do. The thesis and thesis abstracts, you go on in examining thesis or writing thesis, you can come to that. And summaries of thesis are the pages where you find lots of information. Though the more problems you investigate, the more problems emerge for investigation. So if you're an active worker, you will have problems and problems and problems. And the criteria for selecting a problem, if you have got a topic that you, what will you, uh, what will you consider in accepting that as your research proposal is find out the institute with particular interest. Do you have a particular interest in your institute? Will the interest will sustain in your mind? Your interest may survive for limited time and you will just move from that area to another area. This should not happen. Are you sure you are going to be in that subject for more than five years? and necessary equipments are available with you. If not, how long it will take to come, where you can go and use it. Are subjects available? I mean, subjects here is the 
the rat or your exam if you are a questionnaire based you want to have a specific uh, population of the uh, public are they available to you how difficult or how easy will it be to reach them the library facility is sufficient can you of course this is this has become uh, available through the internet right right now and then the is the study feasible in your place and the a chain of no strong the, the chain that you all these links make a chain and the chain is no stronger than the weakest link in this so all this you should first answer before burging into a specific question that you want to make it as a uh, project and when do you need to repeat an investigation that you have already done or somebody else is done is could it be done more better using better skills better techniques or uh, can you reach to better conclusions than that was achieved earlier then to write any research proposal you have to review review the literature and there are primary sources that is the research papers original the work or thesis that is available to you there could be secondary sources which are encyclopedia abstracts or guidebooks there could be tertiary sources like the textbooks and the reliability of the source of information is generally a function of the number of hands through which the information has passed so the first and most important thing is to read research publications research articles in your area where they have published recently the techniques the methodology they have used and how they have reached to it and what are the questions they did not ask find out the gaps in that and try to answer the gaps or further the knowledge that they have uh, already done what i would suggest is for younger people for younger faculty members it is too good to start with gap areas and then gradually jump into the edge so you become a leader subsequently so if you want to become a leader right at the uh, beginning it may be a little difficult for you so find out the gap areas first work on gap areas try to fill in the gaps at the same time address the edges and gradually you jump from gap areas straight to the edges and start working in the uh, with the leadership of that subject and internet of course is a very great source while reviewing you must care about these uh, five c's that is cite compare the information contrast the information in relation to what you have done or other people have done and, and have a critic on the literature and then connect with what information is available and if you can do these all of them together then you could write a very good uh, research uh, review and a review is very important in a, a research proposal and review should be brief and should be to the point and should be answering or leading the question that uh, that has been asked or you are going to ask and then you design the study and the project every study is designed on this basis there is a statement of hypothesis a statement of assumption definition of terms appropriate of research design description of samples or populations is a control of error and reliability and validity if you look into all these top points that i have made up everybody understands that i don't want to, with the limited time i don't want to get into them in in uh, individual ways but let me tell you all these are very nicely helped to understand if you have got a friend in statistics department get a statistician into a fold talk to them they are the people who could say how many subjects are to be there what question can be asked what results we can have which can be statistically evaluated to reach to a answer which will be acceptable to the public and so you must have friends in different areas of your interest like starting from statistician to a computer scientist to a librarian i'll tell you uh, on the way why you need all of them and people who are uh, you should have a friend in literature a good person who would help you in writing or you know, making your write up uh, more uh, readable and things like that so proposals with broad objectives not achievable in time or written without specific details are viewed unfavorably so you should have clear cut objectives and these objectives should be achievable within the limit of the time of 3 years 2 years or 5 years depending on the project that you have made and the details should be specific and to the point and should be understandable to the person who is reading it and they should be written in a very lucid manner it should be a story told very nicely otherwise nobody is going to read nobody has time to read your research proposal 
a true leader is always ahead of his time so you should be always ahead of your time not only in reading but also in speaking in understanding in writing in everything and that needs lots of reading unless you read in your subject you can't do much in that and limiting a problem not to be too ambitious don't write a very ambitious project the very first project i wrote was very ambitious which was told to me by professor gomti gopinath so nicely she rewrote the paper uh, the project proposal line by line and it, she calculated and told me you are going to make 50000 slides throughout your life you cannot study them so your time period is only 3 years and within 3 years you can do it only if you limit your question you limit your work that can be covered in 3 years and narrow down to specific questions the more you specialized you become your question will become narrower and narrower and narrower this is a reverse pyramid so as you grow your question will become pointed more pin pointed towards one thing and then we come straight to the components of a proposal and how do we reach to do that the title this is very important tell i tell you and i usually write the title of the project at the end after everything has been done then i write my title so that that really helps you because the title should have all the words that can explain the project very carefully so i am giving some of this there was a very good article writing um, uh, a research proposal that is published by ica icar and from that i have taken a few uh, topics you can see these topics like this petro crops establishment of petro crops farming in westlands of rajasthan so see how specific it is progeny testing of young cross bred bulls in rural areas or for example animals and handicraft in the urban system a national survey or if you come to the last one greening the desert conserving water in rajasthan with ponds tanks and water sheds how nicely how specific they are and now that uh, professor behra has already told you that i have completed some more than a dozen project i would just give a few titles of my projects which i i love them this is like studies on role of microglial activation in neuronal apoptosis It's very clear ne microglial ac ac activation and neuronal apoptosis these are two things how this influences that i could have written this title in 50 words also role of microglia in adult neurogenesis or for that matter impact of maternal protein malnutrition on the genesis differentiation and maturation of astrocytes and oligodendroglia or if you look into the title that we framed for the consortium i say we said national initiative on glial cell research in health and disease so this title should be very specific if it is very specific you and the reviewer also enjoys and your work also becomes specifically known to people in the project summary you should be very specific what you should do and what should what beyond that nothing you have to do is give the project title the name of the pi name of the institutions don't forget to write all the names of investigators and all the institutes where they are going to work from write in telegraphic language the entire summary in in your school days you must have read pressy writing that is one thing which is very essentially required for a researcher writing saying thing see you what you write in 500 pages in a thesis has to be written in 20 pages in a paper and 200 words in a summary or an abstract so you should know how to write big and how to write small should be self contained descriptions of the research activity including research objectives methodology to be adopted except expected outcomes of the project they should be all specifically mentioned in that so if you do that people will know that you are going to contribute this much and it is known what are the objectives what could be the outcome of the project and if you can also write how this outcome is going to benefit the public or the uh, people at large when i go as a phd examiner to any viva i ask a student you have been the government has spent enough on you and now you have got this thesis which we are uh, giving you as a phd degree on that tell me in how many years or days this will be applicable to my life to your life 
So that is something very essential to be understood and asked by every researcher because you are spending the government success or the taxpayers' money to reach to a particular answer. Then there will be keywords. People will ask you keywords. What are the keywords? They are required for the reviewer to go to specific sites and find out what are the knowledge available in this area. I tell you the best person to help you in getting a keyword is the librarian of your institute or a professor in library science and information science. Make a friend like that. I have one that helps. And then uh, the, these, these specific uh, words, keywords, facilitate information gathering or retrieval from uh, the internet or from the data source where, where the people will work. And subsequently, your data could also be stored in that keyword. And uh, do underline these keywords when you, whenever you write in your project summary. So your project summary should specifically say these are the area subjects on which we are going to write. And there will be one thing they will ask, what is the origin of the proposal? Why you are, where, where from you got this idea? And this is very important, I tell you. This origin of proposal could be uh, many sources from the literature, from the present day scenario in the society, or a work that you have done, a training that you got, and all these are important. But make an amalgamation of things. Try to tell that this is important because there is a societal need of it, number one. Then say you have done some work in this area, so you have got the expertise. Then say you have already done some work which has been published and appreciated by your peers. And then say that these are the areas which I can, these are the questions which I can ask, answer, and the answer could become useful for the public or for the general uh, mass. So that is how the proposal becomes very uh, interesting for the funder or the funding agency or for the reviewer who, who looks upon that. And usually, the best thing is to link the relate the project to the work that you have already done and the expertise that you have already got. That proves that you have been doing this work and you can possibly do this work very carefully. <coughs> then the definition of the problem. The reviewers would like to know exactly what this problem is because there they, they, they may be people, not many people working in the area or the question that you have asked. So you need to help them. And what are these? Give precise technical statement of only those problems which the project is expected to cover within a specified time of three years. There can be many other things this way, that way. Don't go to that. Just talk about what is to be covered in your project. A historical or general introduction to the area will not be suitable because then it becomes general, it not becomes specific. Instead, a straightforward definition of the problem could be very useful for the reviewer to review and for the peer group to appreciate that you are going to do something great. Every research proposal has got some objectives and this is extremely important, I tell you. This is what will decide whether this work to be supported or not to be supported. So what are your objectives? Make them as less as possible. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, not beyond that. No project should have 10 objectives to answer. Bring it down, club them, make them only one or two or at the most three objectives to answer. And while writing a objectives, don't write essays on that, write one or two sentence objectives. They should be telegraphic and always avoid um, adjectives and this and that. And don't boost while writing the objective. The objective is a question that you're going to ask and you want to answer. And this should straightway get into the mind of the reviewer and touch the heart and mind of the reviewer. He should be very much impressed with these two or three questions that you ask. And that should speak that when you can ask a good question, you can answer a good question, your data will be very good and will be usable in future. And Always keep in view the definition of the project already outlined. Your objectives should not be away from the definitions that you gave. You should not keep on talking about Everest and then work on the river Ganga. So you should be talking about one thing and that thing only. If you talk about source, then you go to the mountain base. If you talk about the water, remain in the water only. Don't go to the mountain. So that's a very important thing. And the state of knowledge, what is known now. 
indicate the recent developments proposed in the field work both in our country and in the world and this should specifically say where we stand by this research how the country will go up go up in the subject area how people peer in the international peer will appreciate the indian work how indian science would reach there or how indian economy would reach there how people would understand about indian economy or something like that so it should be very carefully understood what has already been done what knowledge is generated in the country what knowledge is being discussed elsewhere and then how you could really bring them together inclusion of list of important review articles if available if available is recommended so if you give four or five review articles the peer can read them and understand more than what you would, you could write in this proposal so you give them very specific review articles which should help them in understanding the importance of this area and this section will also enable the referees to appreciate the effort that has been done put in to write this project and the pain that you have taken so give them some impression or best impression that you have done lot of work to reach to this point where you have proposed to work the importance of the pro proposed project is something that everybody was a justification of this subject area why the funding should be made to you this is where you have to bring out the importance of the project and could be done in two parts one is matters relating to social scientific and technical advancement of knowledge this is one the other should be issues concerning the application of the new knowledge to the socio economic advancement of the country so no scientist should think that i will do science why should i talk about its application translational aspect of science now that's that's the uh, demand of the day so whatever you do how it is going to help the society how is it going to be useful for mankind that must be brought in how it will influence the uh, economic or socio economic status of this country should also be brought out there so whenever you do one thing whenever you use ask money or use money you should always ask this question wow how this work is going to support the mankind and then they will ask the re review of your own expertise what expertise you have the background of the investigation to establish credentials of undertaking the project have you ever done this work have you published in this area did you go to a foreign lab to learn this technology or things which are uh, known to you alone and no other person possibly knows and the highest relevance of the project to the research already going on in the sponsoring institution or the or the funding agency where you are applying nevertheless a research venture by the investigators in any in, in an entirely new field also gets due uh, consideration i would give a small example here quickly when i was in uk uh, in newcastle i was sent by dbt for learning uh, more of uh, newer technologies then that is the time 1995 96 people started working on the glial cells in india hardly one maybe a couple of people were marginally working on uh, glial cells of course uh, tr professor tr raju was doing a lot of work on uh, astrocytes when i came back to india and said i want to work on glial cells and how neuroinflammation uh, is uh, is responsible for neurological disorders not many people would understand what i am saying because that is not not that was not so common a area so so common a subject in the world even in india so there was a lot of misunderstanding but then the committee called me the chairperson called me asked me to present and tell the committee exactly what i mean by this project so if you do something extremely different than what everybody else is doing don't think it will be rejected it may be very well appreciated and it will become a a uh, seminal contribution of yours to the science of this country the methodology that you are going to apply is very essential for the description should indicate precisely how the stated objectives will be achieved now it is the say for every objective you write the methodology that you will follow to reach to the answer so you should very clear carefully and critically write what you are going to do and keep the door open for newer things to come in don't say i will not use anything else discuss different methods of approach in order of priority what you will do do you will do this first and then if it works you will continue with this or if it does not work then there should be another way of doing it so your plan a plan b plan c should very carefully be written in your research proposal 
then the working elements you must keep in mind there are so many elements there the technical work elements such as designing the experimental model making observations calculations etc or administrative work elements like selecting the uh, equipment selection of equipment obtaining quotations obtaining the equipment the certificates that you need to import the recruitment process and all that these all will take time so your proposal should be carefully planned like that this section should be utilized to indicate the distribution of functional responsibilities between the principal and the collaborating institutions or the principal investigators and the co-investigators in a project just to satisfy don't give the name of your principal investigator of your principal or vice chancellor or registrar or somebody the head of the department something anybody who is an investigator in a project should be doing something in the project it should be very nicely defined here that what is the responsibility of each of the uh, persons uh, involved in this process then the general organization of a uh, proposal that you write always use many many headings and subheadings and that few very important things one major idea per paragraph write small paragraphs and idea by idea one reads one paragraph the idea is over goes to the next paragraph and the topic sentences and initial paragraphs of section are most important so any section you are writing the initial paragraph is very important so be objective in writing that paragraph don't write stories don't write essays always be specific in a research proposal because nowadays they even restrict the length of the proposal so you should be very careful you don't have uh, space to put in jargons or useless material into that so very specific points are to be made and it is a very good idea to underline italicize make bold letters to really specify what you want to uh, say or what are important things in that and uh, always give some cross references and uh, avoid some uh, redundancy but they'll creep in and all the key points should be either in bold letters or underlined and make it specific so that they can see it i'll tell you two things you don't get carried away by the beauty of any fonts that you use see this is one see this is which one is easy to read obviously not this one so not this one this one so when you choose to type you should choose the proper uh, font size the proper fonts which are very clear and clearly visible and nobody would like to take the pain of uh, putting his eyes inside the page to read something you know it should be very well presentable and then make some charts like this which should be telling the story very carefully this is this is one chart i have given from one of my projects i don't want to explain it but uh, just if you have a quick look you could see that the main point is zero inflammation that was my uh, major uh, keyword and how it is going to affect frailty or age associated changes damage to the brain or to the body of the individual so i put all this what are the um, sources of uh, stimulating the neuro inflammation and how neuro inflammation would be influenced by aging or how aging will influence neuro inflammation finally getting to motor function deficits of frailty so this is something this kind of caricatures will be attractive for a peer reviewer and then they will appreciate that you understand the thing and you can make people understand what it is so doing science or doing an investigation is as important no sorry doing uh, speaking the uh, results of an in investigation is as important as doing a good investigation you have done a very good investigation but if you cannot uh, present the data or present the results to the society nicely then your work has got uh, will not get that uh, that boost or that uh, value or sometimes you could give uh, such line drawings to explain more complicated things in that uh, research proposal we should these will make things easy life easy for the reviewers or the funding agency persons the officials to understand what you are writing you don't have to put people if you want to fund me read 500 pages no if you want to fund me i tell you why you should fund that should be the spirit you tell them why they should fund instead of asking them to read to fund you you are not that important they are important because they have got the money to give you so you should be very careful say you make them understand that you need this money for a great purpose 
and this purpose would be understood by them. Once they understand the purpose, they will definitely give you the money to go work. Nowadays, they work a mile, ask for a milestone or schedule of activities. Be as sincerely truthful as possible. If you can do it in two months, say, I can do it two months, one week. Don't say I can do it one month and two weeks. So you should be very truthful. So I can do it in this time, but I'll need a little more time to match the holdups that we have. In our life, we've got lots of holdups. Your daughter will get married, you will become a grandfather, Your uh, there will be a tufan or a cyclone, or there could be COVID, there could be anything stopping your work. So for holdups, hold you should have some time. If the project is for three years, your work should be planned to be covered in 2.5 years so that you've got six months in hand to meet all the damages that could, all the hazards that could come on your way or that could stop you from finishing it in time. And these milestones will all also help you in periodic evaluation of the progress of your project for yourself and for the agency who has funded you. Should be computed on realistic basis. Don't say things that cannot be done and don't say time period which is too little to do a big thing and always take care of holdups i have already told you so the timeline could be presented like this it is difficult to read on your skin i understand but if you look into these rows i have put various rows what you will do installation or appoint uh, initiation and appointment of staff it will be over in first six months so put a tick mark there say for example development of the model will continue for two years you go on uh, doing work on that so go on ticking every six months say one to six months seven to 12 months 12 13 to 18 months so how long this will go on or you could color the uh, blocks like this and say uh, breeding of animals on low protein and normal protein diet these animals will be required throughout your experiment so you will keep on breeding them throughout so all the three blocks there in the uh, on the right, right hand side the colored blocks you could see or the writing, the study of influence of protein malnutrition on this thing, or writing the final report, this thing will come in the last six months. So in the third year, so you put it there. Remember two things. Every At the end of every six months or end of every 10 months, there will be a report writing time. And report writing will take some time. So keep that time in mind. And uh, a, a, an intelligent investigator would start working before he writes the proposal, submits the proposal. The proposal submission, you should start working. The proposal sanction would take about six months. So by the time the grant comes to you, you have already done the sped work. So by the end of the first year, you would already always have a publication there. So you should be active all through. Don't do it. I write a proposal and then sleep till the money comes. No, not like that. You keep working start working on the area because this is very important it may take a while to get the money but by the time you get the money you are already ready you may not appoint a student you may not buy the equipment before the money comes but the initial work you can do you can de develop the model you could get the animals you can start you can you can start standardizing the uh, doses that you are going to give or you could read literature and, and find out what work has already been done and what changes you would need in this your proposal and things like that so you should be working by the time your project comes Possibly, unofficially, your work has already started. I already had one opportunity as an expert to see one, one project in which the publication was already there in the first two months of the project. So I really felt very un uncomfortable. But when I asked the project investigator, how could he do this in two months time? He said, sir, the day I submitted my project and my work was on, by the time I got it, I got some small information. And this information I composed and found a, interesting one so i wrote a uh, small note and i published it in a very good journal so you should be all the time ready to do things so keep working with the project with it without a project your work should continue this is most important part of uh, any grant application and any reviewer would be very interested in this utilization of the results that you will get at the end of the research project it is necessary to widely disseminate the research results and the intent is to get an idea of how the interaction between the researchers and potential users of research results could possibly be initiated, stimulated, and maintained. 
so you must write in this you will publish you will go and present it in uh, conferences and you will make conferences invite people to your thing and uh, go on uh, saying that the data will be useful and data will ask further questions for your next project or next something so you are they should understand that you are active person you will remain active even after this project is over so funding is usually done to a person particularly to the younger ones when it is funded it is expected that they will continue they will become leaders in the future the budget estimates you should be very very careful don't be uh, i mean don't ask too much of money when you need anything you ask that only and with proper justification why and where the uh, equipment or the money will be spent what kind of chemicals you will need what kind of instrument you will need how uh, sophisticated the instrument should be is it available your institute if it is available why you cannot use it and is it available somewhere very close to you then why you cannot go there and do it all these things should be written in that and justify that it is required for you and budget for travel within india with justification should also be there budget for other costs also will be uh, there and should justify it and budget for permanent equipment and justification for the same should be very clearly written write this equipment i need for this this objective and why i need this in my on my table also you should be defining and remember to ask 20% extra than the real cost of everything because by the time the project will come to you the price may go up value of the rupee may go down or value of dollar may go up or anything can happen the cost of the instrument also may go up by the agency who is selling it so you should keep a 20% margin so that uh, by the time you get the money it will be like that and it is not essential that all the money you ask will be available to you so they will definitely have some cut and if you have a, they have a cut also then also you can possibly make it but don't ask 200% don't ask 150% of the money that you need say marginal rise from the what you would be reading at the time of the don't hide any facility that is available to you don't think you can hide anything to the world now and for existing facilities you should write the equipments you have got your animal house your library facilities the equipments in the department in the center nearby institute and all that if there is a instrumentation center how it will be enriched with the equipment that you will buy or why does it, that equipment is not there or are you going to buy some some attachment to some instrument which will be useful and all the time i have seen social science and arts people if you have you will also need some equipment not beyond a pc or a laptop or a printer or a ac the an ac you will need many more things you may need a very good camera you may need some um, some some sort of documentation things you may need uh, Uh, a high-end uh, computer or a server to store your data or things like that. You should try to investigate and find out what all you could, you will need in doing this, and then equipment of the uh, then then instead instead of just asking for equipment which is there in the department, you should ask things which are not there in the department or attachments to the or upgradation of an equipment that is there or some software that can make the equipment work better than it is i know i am running out of time but then i got only a few st- slides to finish it up so be very careful about writing the bio data for investigators if on it this topic itself there should be a webinar and people should be talking about writing a cv also this is very very important but here you don't have to mind bother because the question there will be a questionnaire in your uh, proposal schedule anyway you have to answer that but other research projects with investigators will influence the peer reviewers to find out whether you should be funded or not the work that you have done <coughs> the work that you are doing the projects you have completed and the projects in hand will help the invest- uh, reviewers to understand that you are a serious worker funded so what time it takes to prepare a Uh, project say the writing up it will take 60% of the time consulting literature collecting information this will take 60% of time you must have 10% of your time as a day dreaming you must have you must dream about a lab dream about an equipment dream about a very good student in your lab dream about the wonderful publication that you want to do 
dream something day dreaming is essentially required and you should spend 10% of your life in doing day dreamings and the first draft will take about 15% of your time the revision and final draft proof reading will take another 15% so this is how if you have got to a month to write you should plan your things like this so that you can reach to the final draft of it and uh, don't uh, don't hesitate to give it to a friend to read your proposal and when he says something take it uh, with uh, all good spirits and you should have two kinds of uh, critics some people who would say you can't do it so they give you a challenge and some people who will say you can do it but so this but what but that you should listen from them so the person who says you cannot do it he is really giving a challenge to you but don't bother about it, him don't kill yourself because there are people who say you cannot do it but listen to them also they give you challenge and listen to the other type of critic they say you can do it but then listen to them very carefully what this but they go they are going to tell you after this word and you will read in between lines what they say some people are very careful in saying things so you should understand that they are really telling something that can kill you so you should be careful not to meet the death so quickly so you want to have both the kinds of critics in life so they are very important people so jisne vidur ko bhaga diya uska pura sansar ujad gaya so isliye keep a vidur all the time your mantri should be very good person very capable person then how many i always ask my colleagues my students how many dictionaries you have these days they say google gives the answer no you must have dictionaries very good dictionary not one many because all the dictionaries are useful in different ways some give the meaning some give how you use it some give how you should not use it some give the other words for this like that the step to final draft is there so you should be carefully editing it give it to a student or a or give it to a colleague who is very good in writing i i don't mind giving it to a colleague who is who is in subjects of english or something if he or she gives you some good ideas accept it don't worry you are a scientist you may not be a very good writer be a good presenter both in material speed and your personality all the time all the ways you should be very careful keep away from non productive discussions gossips and arguments most university faculty spend most of their time in this i always ask people not to do that don't enter into non productive discussions arguments and planning things which will stop others let others work they will let you work that's the fundamental principle of life and you must follow it and if you let people work more people will let you work then you will have to go and present so i'll quickly do a few things for you and if you plan prepare and practice and then go and present plan describe your audience audience this is a very uh, informal thing i'm just going to quickly tell you define the purpose of your talk talk inform persuade motivate to action sell teach and train all this should be there in your proposal presentation uh, establish a very positive mindset any time you talk to people prepare an attention getting opening and then illustrate all your points with drawings uh, charts and easy to understand mechanisms prepare prepare a memorable close when you close down people should not forget you for a week and please for heaven's sake don't make those uh, beautiful presentations without any information like the colors change the words come in different ways uh, the words dance before they disappear and they dissolve into the screen and they go into your pocket things like that don't do all this caricature in your presentation be straight and say what you want to say make a very good beginning and make a memorable closing and come out saying thank you i look forward to do better work if you support me practice and practice and practice that is exactly what i say and always practice before someone also while presenting understand that it is the privilege that you have been called to present is your responsibility because if you do not present responsibly the money may not come and this is the only opportunity for this grant after you present you may not be given another opportunity to present. rely on your fundamentals and make a positive first impression that should last longer your first project first project finding first project presentation that keeps on 
echoing all the time. When 10 people listen to you, uh, understand that you're doing good work, they go to 10, each one of them go to 10 more. So very quickly, 100 people come to know you and your work. And soon thousands of people will come to know you and your work. When you publish, the whole world will come to know about you and your work. That should be the ambition. <clears throat> I always say we are researchers because we want to know that the world is knowing us. So if you do, you publish, people will understand that you are somebody and you are doing something. If you are somebody and you are doing something, you must publish. So try it once and you will love to do it again and again. You get one project, work on a project, be successful with that, you will die to get another one, second one, third one like that. And it is nicely said, he has half the deed done who has made the beginning. So if you have written the first project nicely, but the first project successful, you have achieved half of your life. So you can go on doing it and doing it and doing it. All the best and every person should try to enrich the institute to which you belong. I believe that any university is not made of bricks, it's made of its faculty and researchers. So you are responsible for your own university. And I all the time say, if you grow, your institute grows. If your institute grows, you become further known. You become bigger. You work in a big university, you become bigger. When you become bigger, your university becomes still bigger. So you are the person who would bring us into the first hundred of this uh, whatever uh, gradings or, or numberings that we get for every institute. All the best. Thank you very much. You are most welcome if you got anything. Thank you, Raksa. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Patro, for your uh, analytical and informative uh, speech. I'm sure all the participants uh, have gained uh, new ideas. And, um, you know, I would just like to speak two minutes before it is given, the platform is given to our moderator. You know, I have interacted with many, not many, at least a few directors uh, of uh, national funding agency. And all the time they keep on saying that, you know, we don't receive good proposal from your state. We are sitting on big money, but good proposal are not there. I think rightly pointed out by you that uh, the, sometimes the objective is not specific, methodology is not clear, timeline is uh, not achievable, and budget is not realistic. These are the four reasons for which most of the pro project proposals are rejected. And uh, you have touched upon all this point and explain our participant uh, nicely how we go about. Thank you very much. And uh, But one thing, one question that should be asked by our uh, moderator, and he should uh, raise this question, you said somewhere in passing that the credential of the researcher is very, very important. So do you think that a beginner, you know, who doesn't have a you know, very good credential, is not eligible to have a big grant, uh, or if he's writing, he won't be able to win a research grant? So <laughs> this is uh, one question the author would like to know. Okay, you are a scholar, you know, you have handle lot many projects, big projects, but not about the beginner, raw, novice, green, who is at the entry level, and who is trying to make a mark, and who is trying to have a breakthrough by submitting a project proposal. What kind of tips you would like to give? Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I will answer this question very nicely. You see, I, when I wrote my first grant application ever, that time, uh, getting a project for one lakh rupee would have been a very big thing. In any, I'm talking of 19... 90s, 1991. So my first project was for 9 lakhs. And uh, what is needed is you write a good project, your credibility should be established. As a PhD scholar, as a postdoctoral fellow, you should have nicely presented, published yourself. And your research proposal that you write should have meaning. And you should go and do this, all the exercise that I said, you should be talking to uh, statisticians, you should be talking to people, and then go and present your work and your credibility, where from the credibility comes. You go and attend. I tell all the ASA scholars and the younger teachers, I tell you, you should go to all important conferences and meetings in your subject. People should understand that you are thriving to become a big scientist one day. People should understand that you want to do good work. 
then you become the blue eyed baby of many many stalwarts and people start liking you people start supporting your work and they will be there to tell you that yes this man is trying to make a mark let us support him you will get a wonderful support there good afternoon sir there are some more questions but uh, thank you very much professor patro for presenting a state by state uh, tips to how to plan and write research projects for the benefit of young scholars and going about it in a very systematic way uh, touching up all details and going to the nitty-gritty of the writing a research paper and very aptly ending with the bottom line that practice and practice alone can make one successful and there is no shortcut to success and also we have some questions for you sir and i begin with the questions how can the academic behavior of a student be best oriented towards research this is the first question and also by the same uh, person who has put this question another question how can communication skills required for research be developed these are the two simple straight questions then there are more questions so please to answer both the questions i would say bring in the general club uh, into your lab where in every day every week one day you spend two hours for presenting a paper discussing a paper and uh, discussing on two lines what has not been done by the author and what you would do if you have to repeat this experiment so these two things when they start talking about a paper and what has been done and what has not been done and what he could have done all these three questions will help him to develop the zeal uh, of talking or the art of talking science so that is very important you should bring in the journal culture journal club culture into your group and the other way is attend uh, conferences talk to people listen to people speaking and try to repeat it that's all thank you sir should the outcome of a project be mandatorily or necessarily helpful to the development of technology this is another question <laughs> well why do you do a research it should be yes, yes. Should a project becomes successful not only if you answer the question positive if you do an experiment you get a negative result also is a result and now you should know how to use this negative result and make it positive so uh, nobody will fund you just for the sake of funding anybody funds should like to know at the end of the day how your work has helped in understanding a particular question or added knowledge to a particular area of the subject in which you are working so uh, next funding will be dependent on how you have performed in this funding definitely yes There's one more question, sir. Some, yeah, some of the funding agencies expect the findings of research in an expected way, and this happens mostly in evaluation research. How to make how 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 to make the research more authentic? Uh, that is the question. No, no funding agency says to get answer the way they want the answer to be. No, no funding agency says that. it is the brain child of the person who is uh, who is asking this uh, money from so see uh, no no funding agency says you answer the way i want you to answer funding agency says investigate and tell me the truth of the thing so that the knowledge can be forwarded further so there cannot be no agency funds you to get a an answer the way they want the answer to be that is no research that is no research then what about sponsored research sir because uh, that is uh, the go of the day you know you find many sponsored research sponsored and sponsored research please sponsor. sir, allow me to speak sir so a particular funding agency wants you to do the research in a particular way with and come out with some kind of fundings that suits them and that has been the state of affair in contemporary society let us not dispute that so i would like no, to get a i will i'll i'll answer that sir 
say a sponsor research say for example today icmr may have a funding to know how many people in this country were affected by covid how many of them survived and if they survived what are the post covid symptoms in them or how their faculties have been affected so this is a sponsored project so they would like to the numbers how many people were there affected how many survived and what are the disorders that you could see in them this is a sponsored project but if you ask if you ask money for understanding how covid which is a uh, disorder towards the lungs and the respiratory system have affected the brain is something that is new novel and somebody would like to understand whether the covid could pass on to the brain through the blood brain barrier whether it did any damage there or the uh, the immune response of the body has done something to the brain these are questions which are not known and people would like to know so this is not a sponsored project sponsored project is they they give you a question and they want the numbers to come back to you say for example if the country has given 20 lakh crores for development post covid development of the country then the some of the finance ministry may engage some people to understand how this has helped the society so this is a question which needs answer to that question so these are sponsored then then again in that also they don't say tell us lie they say you tell us the number so you give them a number you do not do an analysis of anything else that is a sponsored or for example somebody wants to develop a specific injection method or they design a specific instrument to switch on or switch off something or something. they give you a situation and they say design it for us so that is a sponsored project so projects are of many kinds the sponsored project will be for a specific question and they will ask answer a research project will be the question that you have asked or you have asked on behalf of the agency and you want to give some knowledge in that area so these are two different things definitely a sponsor project will want some information which is required by them next please okay so um, the last last question but certainly not the least and it is from professor ashok atar could you specify very briefly the reasons why 90% of the projects fail to secure funding nowadays let me answer this question sir Uh, professor da this is a very nice question and this should uh, this is one thing that has put people not to write research projects but people should understand why a project is rejected uh, why a project is rejected is because people do not ans do not write the project proposal nicely a call aaya hai kuch likhna hai aur jama kar dena hai that doesn't get any uh, this thing so people do not prepare the project the way it should be they are like i said the specificity of the objectives the their own credibility is to that and the answers they can get the methodology that they will use the objectives are not very nicely written or they just repeat something that has been done many people think that the reviewer would not understand that he is copying another paper see these days it is so easy uh, for example i have found several projects which have already been done and published but they are very nice because those publications are also wonderful so if we just go to the internet we go to pubmed put the keywords and then get a review and then read the review and find out that this has already been done so this money will not come so if you are if you have not carefully prepared your project you will not get the grant this is number 1 number 2 is people think ask a question how credible you are say somebody for 10 years has been a lecturer and never published a paper and now wants a crore of rupees to do work how do we ensure that this 1 crore rupees he will use to publish something see your continuity in your continued existence in science is very important without continued existence in science nobody will fund it so keep on publishing keep on writing keep on asking your uh, your credibility is very big uh, point there then i always say make yourself visible not only attend conferences organize conferences when you organize a conference you get half a dozen people who are very important in your subject they will come to your department they'll see your work they'll see your lab they'll see you at your workplace they'll understand how much you are thriving to become a good worker and when they are on the chair when they are the other side of the table 
they will have a different responsibility for this situation so aap agar khali ek notice aaya aap baith gaye kuch bhi 10 panne likh diye aur bhej diye it doesn't really work like i said every step you should be carefully doing carefully planning carefully do. so every day if you are reading two uh, research papers sir you have done all this for the younger people i'm saying every day if you are reading two research paper definitely you will write a very good research proposal and if you are reading one paper a week then also you can do it but if you are reading one paper in a month i don't promise you that and if you read 10 papers at the time of writing the proposal and you write i assure you the project will be rejected we can know who is uh, reading and writing who is just reading and writing so uh, thank you very much for this very engaging session and you have given very uh, important uh, practical tips to our young scholars and i'm sure they must have benefited from your presentation now over to the vice chancellor uh professor patra uh, i would like to extend heartfelt thanks uh, on behalf of uh, my university sambalpur university and thank you very much professor patra for your wonderful lecture and uh, uh, hopefully you will also join us for the remaining part of the lecture tomorrow uh, professor uh, chakrapani vice honorable vice chancellor of barampur university um, is going to present uh, his lecture on innovation and leadership uh, ecosystem please join us i request all our participant to join us uh, at the same time and i am sure that will be also a very exciting lecture thank you very much